I really hope that uh, you've had a good morning. Let me make a note real quick to something. All right. So what we're talking about today is roots, a vision for the future. This is part two. I want to look up something on my phone really quick. Uh, go get your pencils, papers, um, whatever you need to take notes. Because this is how we're going to make it into our future. Here we go. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, this is what we're going to take into. This is how we go into our future. And um, let me push that one more time. All right, let me go this way. Thank you for your patience. All right. Everyone already prayed. I'm looking, I'm excited for um, uh, to be here. I thank God that he has given me one more day to serve him. I thank God for the resources and the things that he sends into my space. Um, because oftentimes and most lately, I was looking for something else. For one thing, it ran into something else. And that's something else was the very thing that I needed. So I really do feel that in so many ways, God is sending me the answers that I need right now. And uh, for anybody who hasn't experienced that yet, I, I pray that you stay within this, this, this walk with Christ so that you can experience God in this kind of way because it is this kind of faith that helps you when it comes to hanging with that vision for of believing that there is a vision for the future for myself and different people who have gone through things lately some of us caregivers you know you can lose sight of some things because your your plate you know our plates are full so i thank god for his word his seed the roots that i've had opportunity to 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 have in Christ so that during this time of my life I'm not trying to jump ship and believe me there there are constant conversations to say Jill this is too much this is too much you you start thinking outside this box and then I take a pause and I sit with God and I say this um all I know to do today, Father, is this right here. Help me to be present, not run down the road, not be in the past, but be present. And that's important for so many of you to hear because some of us don't realize uh, how the future, looking into tomorrow, going beyond what we could really control, how that actually controls what we do and say. Because somewhere along the line, we're trying to uh, prevent and block ourselves from a tomorrow that we really don't know is going to turn out the way that we see it. So I thank God for all of the things that he's put in our place so that we can know how to follow him and how to keep the step of the spirit. So this is part two, Roots of Vision for the Future. What's the thought that I want to start this with? And that is the importance of root, roots. If the root is holy, the fruit will be holy. If the root is bad, the fruit will be bad. And we're in the business in terms of our spiritual walk, understanding that we are spiritual beings of producing fruit. Everybody's trying to be a producer. You're producing something. There is something coming from whatever is you're rooted in and grounded in. You are producing, we all are producing some kind of fruit. When we are angry and we let that angry go way in front of us, we, we don't produce fruit for the kingdom at that moment. When we are afraid and we start doing the things that fear tell us to do, we don't produce the fruit of faith and, and the fruit of the spirit. So it's just important for us to know, and that's what we're going to go through, uh, uh, what it is to have roots. One of the things that I want to say, of course, I said about... Uh, Coles Church of the Lord's Disciples, you know, for anybody who came along with us when we were 
when the name was changed to Soul Factory, our roots is that we will be a community of the lost disciples. That's what it means to be the church of the lost disciples. And during that time, when we were laying that foundation, when we were building on a foundation, I'm going to say it that way, that was already laid by Christ. We sent out uh, 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 messages and lessons that would help us continue to be that community. If you go to on uh, to the soulfactory.com, you and you you know go through the menu, uh, get with the, and see the dream keys. You'll understand those keys. They're keys. They're keys. You know, I used to say they're keys so that you don't throw away the dream. Now I'm not talking about your dream of becoming a millionaire. That's between you and how hard you work. But I'm talking about those of us who want to, uh, 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 at some point in our life, we want to imitate God and we want to be the body of Christ and we want to become a son of God and we want to be something, not just do something. For those of us, those root things about uh, 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 complete communication, dealing with offenses properly and in a timely manner. You, you know, 99% of what goes wrong that I experienced was that one dream key right there. Zero complete communication. It was that one thing. If you, and honesty, which is true, if you would just do those two things, a lot of the other stuff falls in line with those two things. But that thorough, complete communication in a timely, and, uh, okay, that, and dealing with offenses biblically and in a timely manner. If we would just communicate and not take matters in our own hands, not assume, right? If we would be honest about the fact that we were offended about something and then handle it God's way. What was that? Go straight to the person, ask a question. Go straight to the person, speak to the person. Say something, go get clarity. But what's the bottom line? I've seen it over and over and over again. Folks are afraid to confront somebody because some of us still see confronting folks from something that's combated. But you do that for clarity. You do that because you, you don't assume that what you know is exactly what it, uh, uh, what you know is exactly um, someone else's intent or, or uh, uh, what the person was thinking. But as long as we're afraid of that, and this is why I ask God every day, how long? How long? Because I don't want to be, I don't want to be one out there boxing because believe me, I do it because I fear God. I confront because I fear God. I say what I say because I fear God. Ask me if I would rather sit down and let everything go past me. Yes, I would. Yeah, Jill would. The, the child of God cannot. Cannot. You cannot let a molester come into the kingdom and do what he or she wants to do. You wouldn't let, you would never do that in your own household. That's why the word of God says, listen, don't even appoint an elder whose household, who can't control their own household. Don't even put people, a, a teacher, don't even put people in place who, who don't, un, who uh, is not using these tools in their own life. Sometimes we think God called empty people, God, God called fishermen to fish for men. Right? to be fishers of men because having, having a little something in you already really does help but I'm hoping that anybody listening to these, these messages um, are, are, are ready and understand that the goal is that we would be the Lord's disciples Paul said it this way in one of these scriptures. Uh, I can't tell you which one it is right now. And he asked them, when he said, I follow Paul, I follow Paul. He said, is Christ divided? Did Paul or anybody else you named today, were they crucified for you? See, I'm, I'm saying that because I want you to take those things right there and I want you to grab them. When you grab them, grab them and then write them. 
Because when you when when you get away from those things, you start doing your own thing, thinking that that you know, and assuming and telling yourself that okay, I say this grading your own paper, uh, evaluating your own life in such a way that you are the greatest light instead of God being the light. And then you can wonder how 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 did how did I start here? How did I slip away? You know, I, I asked this on, on, on Wednesday. Why did Judas think it was okay to take money? Right? Judas saw all this thing, all this God, all of this stuff. As the disciple already been groomed in uh, 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 Jewish roots. Why did, how did he think that was okay? See, when we lose sight of who God is, because this world, this world can cloud our thinking, which, it, which, 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 which interrupts some things in our lives. What do the scriptures say? Or what do we learn from the book? Uh, uh, and one of the scriptures say, listen, God is taking too long. I'm going to go ahead and spin off and I'm, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and follow the beast. Mm -hmm. I'm going to worship that beast. Mm -hmm. Because those who worship the beast, if you read it in Revelation, what it's going to say is the, the way the way they worship the beast, they say, who can stand against the beast? They gave the beast the honor, the only honor and the attributes that belong to the one true God. But see, you got to, and I got to know, wait a minute, when are we shifting the power from God to the power of the beast? See, I, I, I had to, to anchor myself in that because in doing ministry and some of us read it from the the book we just finished reading but in doing ministry after a while the advice you're going to get is facebook has more power to promote you that social media i'm not saying social media is not great i'm saying but social media can become the end all be all so now when it's time to, to grow the church no one is thinking that when God says grow the church, he's saying grow up the individual, right? But when our minds get away from these things, these things, before you know it, growing the church looks like more people in the chase. See, there's a reason why Jesus told his disciples, when he sent them out two by two, he said, only take one to me. And when you get out there, you're going, to, you're going to have to let me provide because the minute money and paychecks get in the way, get, get, get come into the space, then the dependency is on a paycheck and not on God. And when the dependency becomes on a paycheck and not on God, when those seats get empty, your heart starts beating. What am I going to do? Because busts in the seat mean money and ties. Oh, this is a scary place to be. Oh, it's scary to the flesh. It is. It is. And when all of this is happening at the same time, at the same time, sometimes you innocently get into that space. It's so innocent. This is why, this is why, as Felicia said, you know, uh, 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 we have to get delivered over and over again. This is why our faith must be tested so that we can continue to increase and produce. This is why God has to prune us because sometimes this world um, that's, that looks like the majority, this world, this ain't the narrow road. That wide road has a whole lot of instructions and examples and wisdom and all kinds of things. And while God is allowing, allowing us all of us, whether it be with our children, with our jobs, in our sacred life, in when we, you know, uh, 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 public life, I should say, or personal life. God knows when he has to send something in our space to teach us not to live by bread alone. See, my prayer is that right while you're in the middle of talking, that's what I was doing. That the Holy Spirit can speak to you. This is what you want to say to them, Jill. Now, those are your words. Hear my word. Here are my words. Give them this. I need to teach you how not to live by bread alone. It's all that other stuff. That's me talking for my human part. See, this is what God will do. 
Because God's word, God's word will penetrate. It's got to teach you how to live, by, not live by bread alone. By, by earthly substance, earthly nutrition. He has to teach us how to do that. And what did he say to them? He said, so I sent you into the wilderness in a place where I can reveal myself to you. I've got to teach you how to see in the dark. I've got to teach you how to see the, 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 the non-tangible. I've got to teach you how to not read by faith, but walk by faith. The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. That's my world. And Jill and anybody who think they're going to teach, you baptize them into that. You immerse them into the fact that this is an unseen world. Things are unknown and they're unpredictable. But our God is stable and steady and able and able to do whatever we ask for, uh, 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 to do for us when we don't even know to ask for imagine or imagine. When you forget who that God is. When you forget that in all the busyness and the fear and the trials from family, job, life, children, aging, illness, all of those will come in and try to bump you off the path. But you must be rooted in who God is. And the way that your roots stay fresh or that you, you recognize that, though, that you really do have roots is because you're producing fruit. If you're not producing fruit for God, you're going to forget that you have roots of God. And then those other roots called, with, with Dave Thompson called, Jim Giants in your past. Then, then, then you'll be growing fruit out of those fruits. Out of the roots of Adam instead of out of the roots of Christ. Out of the roots of your earthly self instead of the, out of the roots of your new creation. We started off this year. We here now, baby. We here. We're here. All things, all things are passed away in, 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 in a certain space. You're in a new world now. You are, but in this world, in this world, you got to learn to see in the dark. You got to learn sometimes to sit in the dark and still, and, and meaning this, you got to walk with God and keep moving. Because even though you can't see the future, even though you don't know what's in front of you, the one true God that loves you enough to keep delivering you over and over and over and over again did not set up your future to trip you up. If you are not tripping in our future, we're doing that. We're doing that. And this is this is where this is where we get to come back to. That's what repentance means. Return. Return. For, for many of us, it's in there. It just buried all under all the other stuff that we have given superiority in our lives. All you got to do is go to that same light, to that, what, what, what the Bible say. Listen, you may have a mustard seed worth of faith. Just a mustard seed. But if you take that mustard seed and you, and you put it in its proper place and you give it that faith superiority in your life, um, you can ask a mountain to move. You can ask it, uh, uh, whatever you're dealing with to be pulled up by the roots. And it will happen. And those of us who have done that, we can tell you that it's true. And here's the fruit. Here's one fruit of mine. My daughter said, Mom, you used to be so serious. And so. She said, now you like some kind of Zen guru. That's what she said now. What she said years ago is you have changed so much. It's not me. Um, I don't. I don't have a sign in front of her saying, "See, see how I change." I need you to acknowledge it. Nope. I'm going about my business. Why? Because I didn't want it. Uh, uh, how do How do you know I didn't want it? Because at some point I asked myself the question: Why are you angry? What you afraid of? All oh, those questions. They're wonderful things because they have the ability to draw stuff out of you. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about it today. Let's go slide slide one. Says this, read with me. The seed sown on rocky ground is like a person who hears the message and accepts it with joy at once, but has no root in himself. That's very important for you to know. Because what it's saying is there's nothing on the inside. You have all of the stuff on the outside and you can move with the crowd until trouble comes, but has no root in himself. So he stays on for a while. Excuse me. 
<laughs> but as soon as some trouble or persecution arises on account of the message, he immediately falls away. See that message that is on account of that message could be a uh, 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 a message of faith, a message from God. Uh, that I'm not talking about a preaching message. I'm talking about one that the Holy Spirit is speaking in your heart. Second bullet. A root of a tree is a part of the tree that grows downward, usually into the soil. It holds its, it holds it in place while at the same time absorbing water and minerals. All of these substances, excuse me, all of these substances are in turn stored for food. Now here's my question. The question is, what do you have stored in the root of your tree? So listen, a root is the part of the tree. It sustains the tree. The root also produces the, the tree. Listen, when the root sustains the tree, the tree produces the fruit. So here's the question. A question. What do you have stored in the root of your tree? What's down there? That's the question. Let's take that down. So last night, I wake up at some point. Maybe it was maybe it was Friday night or, or something. But anyway, nope, nope, it was yesterday. And I started searching for different things and went from one article to another article, and then somebody referenced a the book. They had a quote. So I decided I'm going to download the book. So I think it started on Friday. I downloaded the book. And by Saturday, I started reading a little bit of the book. So I'm going to tell you the name of this book. Because I think there's no coincidence that this book is in our space. Read it. Don't read it. Choose who you want to serve today. Are you a disciple of Christ? What do you believe? What, what, what are you reading up on? What, what, you know, what are you feeding on the inside? Christ said, feed on me. What are you feeding? What are you doing? All of those are questions. And they're questions for you because that's where your breakthrough is going to come through. So here's, here's the name of the book is this. Questions are the answers. A breakthrough approach to your more vexing problems at work and in life. That's the name of the book. So I'm going to read a couple of quotes from the book. One says this. Questions are places in your mind where answers fit. Now, let me tell you why it's important to me to say this to you or, or to feel that this God just sent this into my space. Because I'm telling you, I was searching for things that have to do with HR managers, not this. So I don't think it's a coincidence that we just blew up as seat knock, that we just finish a book about prayer and asking. Questions are about asking. So now this book is saying your questions are the answers. I think right now God's going to take us to another level. I don't think it. I know it because I'm not past the first chapter yet. Well, I think I'm in chapter two, but I'm just barely past the first chapter and I'm already my roots are already, or something inside of me, already being challenged. Um, already, uh, 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 I, I, I feel some light. I, I see light in areas. Some, something has fallen off. All of that has happened. So let me read some of these examples. I mean, these, these quotes to you. Questions are places in your mind where answers fit. If you haven't asked a question, the answer has nowhere to go. You got to be in my space right now to know how important questions are. And when you ask, things will be lingering till you ask that question. How do we know? Well, then let, let, me, let me stop. Listen, questions have a curious power to unlock new insights and positive behavior change in every part of our lives. They can get people unstuck. What got Jill unstuck? Jill, what, what, what are you afraid of? I was stuck. I was stuck in fear until I asked a question to myself, not about others to me. What are you afraid of? And I only asked what I was afraid of, right? Because I obviously wanted an answer. And the way I got the answer is I had to ask questions. 
Here it is. What, what, what did you say? Uh, uh, questions are placed in your mind where answers fit. If you haven't asked a question, the answer has nowhere to go. So something just floating till I ask the question. Ain't floating no more. Here we go. Questions. They can get people unstuck and open new directions for progress, no matter what people are struggling with. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. A question, a question will open the door for what you really need. It helps you get past your assumptions. What, what, what was one of my workshops some time ago? When you lose your why, you lose your way. That why is a question. But what this helps with the why and the uh, 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 ask, seek, knock, and keep asking, what this ha ha helps us do now is to understand the value of the questions. This is how we know questions are value. What did Jesus, what did God say to Adam? Adam, where are you? He could have said, Adam, what you doing over there by that tree? Or, 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 or Adam, you are by the tree. No, no, no. He didn't, he didn't give those details. Adam, where are you? What did Jesus say? To, what, what, what did God say to Cain? Cain, where's your brother? Where's your brother? You think God didn't know where his brother was? You think that 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 higher consciousness, that awareness in Cain having that having all that dialogue in his head. We know that Cain knew where his brother was because he killed him. But in order to get Cain to connect to the truth, had come by way, by way of question. To connect to the truth, God's truth versus all of those other things that feel like my truth. See, that's a my truth. But then there's a God truth, something that goes deeper than my experience and my realities and my limited thinking. Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say I am? Because just like those disciples, you know, whoever we call ourselves, different people call themselves, guess what? You could be in a huddle with some other church goers. Some other believers, some other church goers, or some believers who are still kind of in unbelief, and it's time for them to come out of unbelief and to mature and grow. And you'll be able to talk about who's he said this and she said that, and they said he did. God come right to you and say, Who do you say I am? Because it starts right there. Judas, who do you say that God is by your actions? Hmm? Those who are who, 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 uh, uh, Treat their wives a certain way. Treat their husbands a certain way. Screaming at your kids. Who do you say I am? Because evidently, your actions are a misrepresentation. So Adam, where are you? See, you hiding from me, God would say. See, the conversation can go that way. It can go further than just where are you? Who told you you was naked? Oh, okay. You are you you are obviously listening to a voice instead of mine because I always knew you were naked, Adam. So, what part of this relationship made you believe that covering up was gonna hide anything from me? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? The leap over nothing. Keep that from the. Don't. Where are you? What, what you afraid of? What makes you think what you're doing is okay? What makes you think God is okay with it? Forget your husband and your wife, your co-workers, your pastors. Who do you say God is by your choices? Because God said for husbands, right? Um, listen, treat your wives as if they are co heirs or your prayers will be blocked. This is how we said it last week. Listen, your ass going to be blocked. You'll be blocked on the phone. Listen, call somebody. Oh, they don't block me. Unblock this caller. You want God to unblock that caller? Um, who do you say is? He, she, it. Because those gender things, that's just, that's just for us to be able to follow it. But that, that some of that stuff, it could have been he or she. 
So listen, who do you say God is? See, that's a question. What did your actions say? Does it say that God doesn't see? God doesn't know? Does, do your actions say there is no reaping for your soul? What did your actions say? See, questions. Here's another one. It says this. Um, the important and difficult job is never to find the right answers. It is to find the right question. For there are few things as useless, if not dangerous, as the right answer to the wrong question. Y'all want to get that book already, don't you? That, that thing already upset. I was already upset in a good way. My flesh upset, turned upside down, put in its proper place, make sure God is on the throne. In some cases for me, because I, you know, I, I kind of, because I teach the way I, I actually get the, the reveal or the download as I ask God a question. So why, why should I say that to them? Not God, why should I say that to them? Because you, you're not the higher authority, but help me to see Help me to see why this is important to somebody other than just me. It's a question. God help me to see that. Then I sit in this chair and I rock and I, I wait. Because after I ask, now I got to see. What does that mean? After I ask, I have to keep my eye. I don't, I don't, I don't dig for the answer. Because I'm going to give the only, I'm, I'm going to give answers for my limited space that I can cover. So then I say to myself, Jill, when the, then when the answers come or when something comes, some reveal, or when I'm looking, see, I'm, 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 I'm helping you see something. I'm helping you see how to navigate in this world. When I see something, God, right now, what I'm doing, what I'm saying, um, do I have the things of God in mind or the things of man? And I ask that question too, Jill, do you have the things of God in mind or the things of man? Because sometimes when you have the things of a uh, 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 man in mind, sometimes you you won't say what you really need to say. And sometimes you had the things of man in mind, human, earthy man in mind. Then you you say things where you ought to be quiet. So there's a time for everything. So so guess what? I got to see God in the moment. In the moment, and I have to ask God. Uh, so help me to know, because sometimes that voice of the flesh it sounds like you. Help me to know. That is a possible thing, but, but it's not instantaneous. That's why jumping in and out of this kind of truth um, doesn't serve you well. Because you don't get familiar with the voice of God when you listen to God two days a week and you listen to everything else for the hard. Okay, two days a week, some for uh, let me put up four things. Two days a week, we listen to God. Two days a week. For two hours or less, and the rest of the week, five days a week, we straight some off this digging in something else. And then even on the two days, which right now for us is Wednesdays and Sundays, God don't get but a small portion of that day. And then we wake up and we won't go out there and, and, and fight a giant in the name of in the, in the name of the Lord. See, sometimes, like I say, you out there fighting giants, and in your mind, you win. But you ain't doing it by faith. See, to do it by faith, you got to keep eating this stuff. You got to keep, you, you got to keep trying to walk this stuff out. Listen, we you are not going to arrive. This is a life, you know, people who lose the weight, oh, this is a lifestyle change. Yeah, yeah. Lifestyle change. Bodybuilding is a lifestyle, a matter of lifestyle commitment and change. And you got to consult God. In everything. Because one day you're going to grow up and find out that the voice of your flesh sounds a lot like God. And sometimes it's sweet, called an angel of light. Sometimes it's sweet. And because this, this, this thing ain't that obvious, I got to check in. And I got to know myself. That's what meditation allows you to do. To get to know yourself, to know your breathing, to know your anxieties, to sit still. So that you can see your, how your energy moves in you. See, sometimes I don't make a phone call or do certain things because my energy is, 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 is surging through in, in a way, in a way 
that I need to settle that matter before I ever pick up a phone. How do I know that? Because I did the other side enough times. I wouldn't talk to my husband enough times with my with all already ramped up in my spirit, believing that once I start talking, I can now show self-control. God said, listen, I was showing you that you that you wasn't going to be in the best place to control yourself when all that energy was surging through you. But 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 guess what you did? You listened to the beast. You listened to the world. I got to get this off my chest. Find that scripture for me. Getting things off your chest. Find that one for me. Where does it exist? Jill. It exists. It is rooted in my hood life, God, and forgive me. So I'm telling you, you can change. But you got to eat this stuff. So here's again, listen, questions are the answers. We intuitively gravitated toward the kind of questions this person who wrote the book likes to call cat catalytic. The kind that knock down barriers by challenging past assumptions and create new energy for pursuing solutions along some new path. See, when you ask the question, Listen, when Jesus asked him, who do you say I am? And Peter was the only one that came up with the right answer. You know what they helped Jesus know to do? Oh, I got to do, I got to do, I got to, I got to get do some work with them. Okay, I see. This wasn't about condemning anybody. You know, uh, 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 this wasn't about punishment. This is about discovery. Have you ever been with somebody and you discover, oh, okay, they don't know as much as I thought they knew. You know, you just might say, listen, I, I've been nothing but transparent. And they still don't get it. And he could say, yeah, listen, he would have ears to hear, let them hear. But guess what? Jesus still continued to try to get those disciples where he knew they needed to be. And sometimes they did not give the right answers. But that didn't matter. You know what mattered? That Jesus asked the right question. Who do you say I am? Because Jesus is no stranger to how folks regurgitate to cliches, right? Just simply what he said, uh, saying what you hear. He said, y'all saying all the right things, but your heart is far from God. Come on. Then. See, once you live that, it'll come out to you. You ain't got to flip through no pages. You are the book. You are, you become, if Jesus is the word of God and you're the body of Christ, guess what? Guess what? That word will be in you too. But you got to live it. You got to live it when no one's looking at you. You got to live it. How did those people know to come to Judas? What kind of vibrations was Judas giving off out of all those disciples who were scared, what none of them super mature? How did they know to come to Jesus? To betray Jesus. How did they know? How did the adversary, what did it say? As soon as he put his hand in the dish with Jesus, Jesus said, go do what you got to do. But it says Satan into him. What did Satan into you? When, when did that become your God? God. You know what it was? See, when in those small ways, those little foxes, in those small ways, you didn't check in. Hey, where's your brother? Okay, I'm like, hmm, I ain't my brother keeper. Okay, right, right, right there. Wrong answer. Wrong answer in this sense, not the God answer. See, God understood, okay, if you are functioning and moving in me, love, um, respect for your fellow man, trust in me, knowing me that you can't hide from me, you wouldn't think that you can play games with me like you can play games with man. See, you can fool man, you can fool God. And when we get to the point that at the end of the day, our goal is pleasing God, whether we can fool man or not, but our goal is pleasing God. We're going to make some different decisions. And we're going to be so powerful. And you listen, you're going to need that power. I need all the power that God can give me and release to me based on whatever I, my capacity right now. 
because I live with my husband who uh, is in the space and it ain't changed right now. And I got to see that desire. I got to get past the fact that I want it to be different and still show up and still not let what feels like, ain't no disappointment in God. At this point, it's just life. But feels like something other than I want. When you something happens other than you want, I'm telling you, you become a great candidate for the adversary to start speaking and praying. And how do we know? Jesus on the mountain, in the wilderness, fasting, hungry. He, he comes. He comes to offer. Choose me over God. He comes to offer. Turn this, turn this, 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 this rock into bread. He comes to offer. Use your gift to get you out of a situation instead of waiting on God. Instead of trusting the one true God. God works up, do some sneaky stuff. Justify your, your responses. Become your own God and your own truth and your own life. And let there be no life greater than your life. Because when that time happens, you are no match. And I am no match for that, that adversary. We are only a match for that adversary because we are united with Christ. And when we do things, Eric Chase sung the song. He will never leave you or forsake you. But you can leave. When did you leave? When did you leave? When did you leave? Why did you leave? See, sometimes what we do is we'll say, I need to get back to where I was. No, no, no. First, you need to ask, ask yourself this question. When did you leave? When did you, when did you turn left when you should have turned right or turned right when you should have turned left? When? And I'm not telling you to go back in your past and dig. I'm telling you that because something has gotten in the root, some poison, something unha un unhappy. And if you keep letting it grow, you will see in your own life that it's no longer producing the kind of fruit that you desire to, pro to produce in God when you said I do as the, as the, as the bride of Christ. When, when did your I do turn to I don't? When, when did that happen? Did you, did, you, did, you, did you have a man and he left you for somebody else? Did you have a woman who left you for somebody else? Because this is when this stuff happened. Did, you, did, you, did your children not do what you wanted them to do and you decided that this don't work? Because somewhere along the line, <laughs> uh, uh, you had plans for God's rule in your life instead of God having plans, his plans for you. Oh, I know all this, meaning this. I know this is part. I've said no to some things. I've said yes to some things and had to get up and repeat. So I know it's real. I know the, the need for mercy from God is real. And I know the need for grace from God is real. I know God's favor is real. And I know God's forgiveness is real because I need them all. I needed them all. And I had to ask for, I had to ask for them all. So here's the thing with question. It says this. Um, so, so the question I asked, as I said, what, what did God say to Adam? Where are you? You think he needed an answer? And Adam needed the answer. But that answer came from a question. Cain, where's your brother? Now, why do you ask Cain? Why, why does Cain have to ask that question? Ain't nobody asked Cain where was his brother before Cain killed him? No, no, no. Because this thing, what it says is, I like this. It says the right questions unlock new solutions to an issue that you had been wrestling with. New solutions to an issue you've already been wrestling with. See, Cain was wrestling with an issue. He didn't just kill his brother because he was uh, walking with God one day and flipped out. No, it was a little, little by little. He didn't check in and he didn't lay that thing at God's feet. And before you know it, instead of uh, 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 bettering himself, he saw that his brother stayed in, in, in reverence with God and brought a better offering, got a better response. And now Cain going to take matters in his own hands. First of all, this is what people do all the, oftentimes. This, this, this is going to be true. 
you're going to go try to kill a human being. Mm -hmm. You're going to try to murder a human being because someone inside of you needs to be dealt with. Why do we think people out here killing people like that? You think that, you think that anybody is so mad at somebody that they haven't known for, for two or three years or never met that they're just going to kill them? No. Someone inside. Some on the inside did not get dealt with properly and we and all of us want to do something with that energy. And if we don't let God transform that energy through drawing, drawing the truth out of us by questioning, who do you say I am? And then you say, oh, you are the son of God. Then why do you call me that and don't do what I say do? Why this son of God? Ah, I'm out. Was this a trick question? No, no. It ain't no tricks to it. The trick is in you. You the trickster. And God wants to save you from being a trickster. Because when you become this trickster, you start tricking other people, especially people weaker than you. That's why sex, sex traveling can be so prominent. But God said, not so for my children. Where are you? Where's your brother? Okay. See, God didn't say, what did you do? He started with saying, where's your brother? Give you an opportunity to see, to see if you're going to pull out of your two containers. One has uh, the, the lie and escape and the fear and the hiding. And the other one has the light in it. And I said, which, which, which bowl is this person going to draw from? Are they going to pull from the bowl of justification or no? Slide two. So Jesus said to those Jews who had believed, keep that up. Now, what I want you to see in this is that Jesus is talking to a whole bunch of people and he's sharing. He said, I'm telling you, everything I'm telling you all is what the father has told me. Whatever the father taught me is this is what I'm telling you. And then there were people in the room who's to, who, who, uh, wasn't responding a certain kind of way. And Jesus could tell, at some point, if you go read John 8 before this, he's going to say, why, you know, stuff like, why are you trying to kill me? Question. Why are you trying, but why are you trying to kill me? Did you know, it's jealousy. See, they need to answer that question. Then they'll, then they'll, then they'll, they'll be able to assess and know where their energy is because their heart start beating and start sweating and little things happen in your body, physi physiologically happen in your body to show you that there's something going on outside and you hate this. You, in their case, you don't hate Jesus because the way he look or the way he walk or, or not what he's only what he's saying. Y'all going through because you think he can retake your position, right? That the people listen to him. And you feel left out. You know, God, God knows that. So he draws that out so that you put in the light and he can heal you. But let's go to this again. So Jesus said to those Jews who had believed in him. Now, by now, Jesus said, okay, I was talking to everybody. I'm not going to keep being in this space with these unbelievers. Who, who, who coming out to hear me speak? But they will not release themselves from the unbelief and even bend their ear to what I'm saying. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk to those people who believe. And I ain't saying, he said, you, 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 you and you, and called it by name and said, you the ones believe. He knew that when he spoke this word, the ones who believe in him was going to hear that word. The other one, then he said, there's no room for me in there. No room for my word in you. So Jesus said to those Jews who have believed in him, if you abide in my word, hold fast to my teachings. Are you holding fast to Jesus' teaching? What, what is justifying your behavior? Who's teaching you? Is it capitalism? Is it, is it the, the how to make money, how to keep money, how to do this? Is that what's leading your spirit? The instructions are coming from somewhere. If you abide in my word, Jesus said, listen, check this out. Here it is right here. You don't have to hold fast to my teaching. Ain't live accordance with them. I'm not here to throw fairy dust and tell you if you just show up in the building with a bunch of believers, that I'm okay with that. So you got to hold to my teachings too. You can't say I belong to Paul. I belong to this. I went to the soul factory. I've learned this. I got a I got a shelf full of books. You 
Fast through my teachings. He said, because if you do that, you are truly my disciples. Okay, then some of y'all think y'all my disciples, but let me tell you, see, Jesus could just say, let me tell you what my expectations are. That you hold to my teachings. Not that you just say things. Not that you go through the old soul factory book with all those lessons and start thumbing through. And now you sound like a, some walking wisdom. No, nope, hold to my teaching. And he didn't say only in public. Do it in private too. Do it when nobody else is around. Let me be the one, be under my control. Here we go. He says this. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Take that down. My question to that. How many of you actually listen to the message, right? Do you, do you go and listen to Wednesdays? It's amazing how I hear people, you go and sit in a room with somebody talking about money. Somebody talking about advancing, you know, I guess letting you live that kind of life. You sitting there three, four hours. But then make this stuff too long. Who do you say he is? Who do you say Christ is? Who do you say I am? My disciples. Because your root is church of the Lord's disciples. Why did it stop? You know why I want to say this to you? Because sometimes it stopped because sometimes we was just reading because we thought if we went through this, these books and we did exactly what they said do, that they would be the actual Holy Spirit and transform us. Nope, this is some information that just keep you. Paul, plant, somebody else, water, only God can make things grow. None of these things make you grow. What they do is they keep you from falling off course. That's what they do. Who the hell are they going to make you grow? Jesus said, are you holding to my teachings? My point is this. It'll help you grow in, 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 in increasing knowledge. But when it comes to your spirit, only God makes things grow. Write that down and make sure you never forget that. Because some of us out here trying to force an increase. You're trying to force an increase. You're trying to force a change. I said, listen, you can't, you can't open the door that I have shut and you can't shut. Open. See every now and then that stuff come out because I was trying to open, I was trying to force the door open. God said, you, Lord, you going you know what you're gonna do? You're gonna dislocate your shoulder. Ah, you want to dislocate your shoulder? You hurt yourself. Ask me and keep asking. Seek me and keep on seeking. Right now, you're not seeking me, Jill. You're trying to snatch that door open because you're trying to seek relief from your circumstance. That's temporary. That's your way, but that's temporary. I'm trying to give you an eternal change so that they will be transformed and some of your old parts will be replaced with new parts. You know, we are not of us, you know, I don't know if this is hood, but you know. We used to go to those people who repair our cars and cars, and when they took out the spark plugs, we said, "Give us the old ones." <laughs> Listen, give us the old spark plugs, but we don't trust you to put the old ones in, mm -hmm, dust them off, and charge us as if they're new. And next thing you know, I done broke down again. My car done broke down again. God said, "Listen, I'm here. Only, only the work that you're looking for can only be done in the light and in truth." And that's why Jesus could say to his, his disciples in that second uh, um, scripture, he said, and, and if you hold to my teaching, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. How are you trying? How, what, what is your strategy for knowing the truth? You think you're going to read a bunch of books? Listen, and I'm putting myself in this, this is what I did. Right? I, I'm just a part of the body doing my part, but this ain't the whole body stuff. See, hold to my teachings. Mm-hmm. That's when you will know the truth. When you hold to my teachers. That's why y'all mad right now. Go and repent. Before I take a little quick more. Mm -hmm. Go and say, forgive me, God. 
I get it. The light is on. The light is on. Thank you, God. I, I was, I was, I was, I was by without having to, to do, I was grinding, but I, I wasn't doing that God grind. She in, the, in the God grind, it ain't grind. It ain't working. The God grind is sitting and waiting. Those who wait on the Lord, they will, they, they will renew their strength. We out there working. I got to get this. I got to get that. God said, what you doing? That ain't my way. That's the world's way. And you're going to live like that for the rest of your life. Finding no rest in the place that you really need rest. Because you're still trying to walk this walk using the wisdom of the world. That doesn't have to be the case. You can let God show himself to you. And it sounds like this. Then you will know the truth. You will know the truth. Do you know the truth? Do you know the Holy Spirit? Do you, are you acquainted enough with the Holy Spirit? That when your spirit is telling you, this is the Holy Spirit moving you, you, you are so acquainted with what the real thing looks like. You think, no, nah, this ain't the Holy Spirit. This just because, because I can tell I'm triggered. I'm triggered. I may be excited, but this ain't Holy Spirit excitement. Do you know this world that way? See, the goal is that you would know this world that way so that all the, 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 the world that's on the outside of this world, that you would know your new world in such a way that even though what's on the outside, may, it may knock you down, but it ain't going to knock you out. I feel like I am one punch from being knocked out. That's how much going on in my space right now. And I would love to say I'm doing too much, but I have to do it. So I have to say, God, give me the strength. To do it. But I know what it's like to be knocked down, but not knocked out. And I don't love that space. But I know that space is real. So I don't quit. I don't quit. Do you know the Holy Spirit in such a way? More questions. You know the Holy Spirit from your spirit. That's what I'm saying. Do you know the difference when you're being moved by one or the other? Because sometimes the voice of your spirit sounds sweet. Let's go to slide. Whoops. I got my pages all mixed up. Okay, here we go. He said to them, therefore, Every teacher and interpreter of sacred writings who has been instructed about and trained for the kingdom of God. God knows the desires of my heart. He sure does. I don't know why that always means he's going to give you a, a treat. He's going to come in and refine you because the desires of your heart are not the desires that's going to lead you to the place where he really wants you to go. God knows the plans he has for me. He sure does. And they're his plans for you. But when we take these kind of things, which happens all the time, these sacred writings, and now you're being instructed and trained, not in king, the kingdom of heaven, but the kingdom of the earth. And that training sometimes looks like this. We got to grow the church. We got to go out and recruit members. But in the kingdom, God says this. This is what you're going to do. You're going to play your part. We're going to talk about it in a minute. You're going to build this body because I know what it means. God said, this, I'm, the, I, I'm the king of the remnant. I don't want numbers. I want faith. I want numbers. What do you want numbers? To say why you want those numbers so bad. So, do you want numbers, members, numbers? Or do you want the, uh, uh, the kingdom of heaven? That says, uh, uh, equip them. Equip them. Are you equipping who's in your space right now? Then why would God send other people in your space? And sometimes when God did to get in, he told him, you got too many people. You got so many people that if I let you win this war, this fight right here, you will think it happened from your own, str from your own strength. So, so to bless you, I'm going to reduce your numbers. 
Because when I reduce your numbers, this may not be everybody, but for you, it's going to teach you not to live by bread alone. Customized solution for somebody. But what happens if you're looking at that world and you're doing comparison and you're reading this and we're going on that and we think that this thing is what God is going to absolutely do? No. Nope. This is personal. And even when we feel like in it, we're in that dark, we got to seek God in that darkness. In our dark, it ain't dark to God. No more than that leaf could hide whatever Adam was trying to hide. God was like, oh, Adam, what you doing? I already knew you was next. What are you doing? Yeah, I know what you're going through. Let me do my thing. Let me do my thing. Let me weed out. Let me separate the wheat from the weeds. Let me show you who believes, who, who, who answered that question right. Who do you say I am? Let me show you who answered that question like ambition. And who answered that question like faith. And don't be scared, Jim. It's going to scare you. Because you're you. But you keep your eyes on me. What's going on in your house? Oh God, what's you know? I got this. Keep your eyes on me. Let me lead you through this valley of shadows. Isn't that beautiful? They're shadows, not realities. I got to lead you to the through the valley of the shadows of death. These not the realities. Just the shadows, but shadows can be scary as heck. When, when you see it from your human mind. So I heard this song the other day. Okay, before I do that, let me read that scripture again. Go back to slide three. I see, I ain't gonna get through all this, but that's all good. <laughs> he said to them, therefore, every teacher and interpreter of the sacred writings who has been instructed about and trained for the kingdom of heaven and has become a disciple. There it is. What you trying to become? Try to become a son of God before you become a disciple of the son. Listen to me, y'all. Come on, write this stuff down. Listen, pin it all on you. Put it all on your wall. Are you trying to become a son of God before you become a disciple of the son? Before you live out those teachings that you already have? Before you get the power to live in glory and, 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 and ask mountains to move? Nah. You got to become a disciple of, 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 of the son of God first in this sense. Because the faith, the real faith, not the word faith and the name, applying that name to different things. No, no. That disciple, that 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 son going to show you how to live by faith. God, he said, I only, I only say what he tells me to say. He ain't say, you know what Jesus didn't say? Oh, it's a whole lot I can't say. Because guess what? I'm sure it was. He said, but I won't do that. I have the level of self-control and the honor and respect for the Father to trust what God is going to do, even when it looks like somebody's taking my life. He said, nobody's taking my life. I lay it down. How can you say that? How can you keep doing what you're doing, even after you feel like you've been poured all the way out? Faith. Faith in, in knowledge. And connection to the one true God. He says, says, therefore, every teacher and interpreter of the sacred writings who has been instructed about and trained for the kingdom of heaven and has become a disciple. Once all of that has happened, this person is like a householder who brings forth out of his storehouse treasure that is new and old. Some treasure that is new and old, uh, fresh and familiar is what I like to call it. He said, but all these things take them. Those things, see, see, see that light, see that, that trench, all those things you're trying to bring out of your storehouse, they happens after. It happens after you have been instructed. But how is this going to happen if, if come Wednesdays, you just don't care no more? Uh, come Sundays, and, and now that it's online, you won't even have to do it those days. You can listen to old stuff. But what you are forgetting, is that there has to be some instruction and training in kingdom life. But when you're chasing, not kingdom life, but earthly life using kingdom words, 
you'll find yourself on course and you won't, you, you won't know that immediately, but the way you'll know it is by your fruit. Because kingdom life produces kingdom fruit. Earthly life using kingdom words produces earthly fruit. Still fear, still no rest, still anxious. God said, enter my rest. That's kingdom life right there. Let me come into this space when you're not worried. Because when you worry, you don't make the best decisions. When you're anxious, you don't make the best decisions. You're, you're not aligned. You're, you're a kingdom, you're, you're a house divided against itself. Come into my rest. That's kingdom life. All this running around, uh, 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 showboating, trying to be seen. That ain't kingdom life. That's, it, that's, 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 that's the entertainment world has made its way into the community of Yeshua. Into the church, which is an assembly of believers. I said, upon this rock, I will build my church, my community. What rock was that? Was that the 10 carat rock you put on your finger? The four or five carats you wanted your ears? What carat was that? What rock was that? That's a question. Listen. Have you become a disciple? And what is the evidence of it? What's your evidence that you are a disciple of Christ? And please don't say that you've been in the soul factory for 27 years. Please don't say that. That is not evidence that you're a disciple of Christ. What is your evidence? Look at your life and your choices right now and ask yourself, are you holding to Christ's teachings? Are you even interested in Christ's teachings? Whose wisdom are you following? Because Christ's disciples follow his teachings and then they learn from his teachings and then they bring his teachings into your space. Even if they don't quote scriptures. They ain't going they, they, they to high five some of the stuff folks high five. What is the evidence that you're a disciple of Christ? So last week, Will sent me a song. Will Washington is one of the uh, presenters and ministers and I'm going to say elders of this ministry. And uh, so he sent me a song. He said, this reminded me of last week talking about the roots. So I'm going to play just the first verse because I want you to see these words. God bless you, Jonathan McReynolds. I think that's your name. This is such a wonderful song. Let's play this. Go on, bass. To the basics, jumping down from the clouds, getting grounded in you. That's where we at, people. That's where we at. Such an appropriate song. Such an appropriate song. And that's what I mean when I say God sends things in my space to confirm to me. Joe, I'm speaking. It's me. It's not you just reading stuff and being excited about something. It's me. And it's important that God gives that, she, she sends that my way, because if not, if not, then when I'm at being asked to do the hard thing, I'm going to want to not do it. God said, no, that's me. Do the hard thing. See, you know, we like, do the right thing. No, do the hard thing. 
It's easy to do the right thing. The problem is we don't do the hard thing. Let's go to slide four. This is how we do it. After he talks about, after it's, it's, it's talking about um, Jesus giving the gifts of pastors, teachers, apostles, and those particular gifts, it talks about that. And then, and, and he gave those gifts to equip the body. And then that's a 411 through something else. And then it starts here at 414. Read it with me. We will then no longer be infants tossed about by the waves and blown along by every wind of teaching. I just, that's all I just said. You know, who, what wind of teaching? Who, who, who's your father? Your disciple? Is it Christ teaching? What teachings? We will then no longer be infants tossed about by the waves and blown along by every wind of teaching at the mercy of people clever in devising ways to deceive. You better know that's real. People are devising ways to keep you from seeing clearly. See, deception is not that there's no truth. It's just that it's truth, half truths. These pieces are conveniently left out. Enough, enough bait to get you in, but not enough to sustain you in the truth of God. Here we go. Verse 15. Instead, listen to that. Instead of something else, move to this place. Instead, speaking the truth in love. This is the hard truth. We will in every respect grow up. What's going to grow us up? We got to speak the truth in love. Can't be one person doing all the heavy lifting while all the scared people sit back and don't open their darn mouths. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in every respect grow up into him who is the head, the Messiah, under his control. The whole body is being fitted and held together by the support of every joint. With each part working to fill, fulfill its function, this is how the body grows and builds itself up in love. So how does the body grow? Everybody got to do their part. Hey, you got to speak the truth in love. Didn't say you got to speak the truth in judgment. Not in judgment, but in love. You know how you speak the truth in love all the time? You ask a question. You got me quite, you ask a question. Who, do, who, do, who, who's the, who who told you to do that? Um, that's a question too. Um, where did this come from? Adam, where are you? Cain, where's your brother? Uh, this is how the body grows and builds itself in love. Why am I telling you this? Because everybody who wants to be a part of this, don't take that down, this growth, this thing that God is doing, I'm hoping that, that we can, by faith in God, we can shift ourselves from away from all the things we've seen for years that looks like it's successful in man, but this is, this is what God is saying through the Apostle Paul. Second bullet says this, there are ways to grow a business and there are ways to grow a church. And it's, take it and it's scary. Because, you know, with business, with business you... You, you, you have outcomes. You can predict something. Do this, do this, do this, do this. It's a formula. This right here ain't a formula. So God got to teach us how to be, how to be in this space. Because if not, if not, um, it gets scary. Last but not least, let's go to slide six. Here we go. Remember, what did we just say uh, about being grounded in you? Uh, Ephesians 3, don't turn to it. Don't would tell you that uh, that we need to be deeply rooted and securely grounded in love. We got to get grounded. What does grounded mean? We got to go back to some roots. Other things that come in and, and distracted us. Let's get back to some roots. The roots of love. The roots, God, God's plan for our lives. God's plan for creating a community. Here we go. Everybody need to know this. Here we go. You ready? No, no, no. Turn. Go to slide six. I don't want to read that one. Thank you, though. This is Hebrew 4, 12 and 13. Read it with me. For the word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of the soul and the spirit. You can't hide. The completeness of a person and of both joints and marrow, the deepest part of our nature. God's word will get to the deepest part of our nature. You know what? 
I just told you some of God's word. What did he say? Adam, where are you? That's God's word. That's what God said. Hey, where's your brother? God in the flesh, the Lord, Jesus. Uh, who do you say I am? See, that's how you, that's how that sword, that get how you get to the deepest parts of our nature. Here we go. What does it do? What does it do? Exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. You're going to want to run away from this standing there like, because sometimes when your real heart gets get, 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 get exposed, you know, you want to hide. Like Adam, you want to hide. But God said, listen, don't find your identity in Adam. Find your identity in Christ. And verse 13, and not a creature, listen to this. And not a creature exists that is concealed from his sight. But all things are open and exposed and revealed to the eyes of him whom we have to give an account. So I end with a question. What makes you think God don't see what you're doing? What makes you think you don't have a given account in this life for the choices that you are making? What makes you, why do you believe that God doesn't see? See, when we put those things back in our roots again, that other adversary, that voice that, that, that scares the crap out of us. When we get back in that space, then some other voice is not gonna tell, ain't gonna tell you, you don't know nobody see. No, don't no, uh nobody sees, right? But God is not a body, God is a spirit. The spirit does see though. And we got to give an account. Let's not forget that so that we can become these disciples that God was talking about. God bless you. I pray that this nourishes you to the root of who you are so that we can be producers of fruit for the kingdom. Hallelujah, 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 amen. So the only appropriate way I believe to end a message such as this, there is, there was just, there's so much that was covered here today. It's kind of like, today was kind of like Thanksgiving where it's just too much food on the table for you to eat all at one time. And so you come back for seconds, thirds, fourths, and fifths, and then look for dessert. You're not gonna be able to digest everything that was just taught today in this one sitting. And so first I would encourage anybody that tunes into this message today, you must watch this at least one more time, at least one more time. That would be my instruction to you. You must watch this message at least one more time because you were served so much that you're not gonna be able to digest it all in one sitting. I've got three full pages right here. You're not gonna be able to digest it in one sitting. God is trying to tell you something. God has just told you something. There were so many questions asked in this service. So many questions that I believe the only appropriate way to end a service like this is to ask at least one more question. And it was one of the last questions I wrote on my notes. How will you respond today? How will you respond to the many questions, to the questions that the Holy Spirit is asking you right now in your spirit, because something pricked you. See, as she kept teaching, I found myself stopping at other points and getting lost in the spirit and then having to catch up. That's why you can't get it in one sitting. Because I had to check in at one point and then catch up with what was happening. Because God was hitting with the other question. What are you asking? What questions are you asking? What questions aren't you asking? And what is being asked of you? And above all of that, how will you respond today? See, today you got a lot of questions and the answers as was, as was spoken are in the questions. Now, the reality now is I have to choose how I want to respond right now. I don't know who you are, I don't know where you are, I don't know, and I don't think it matters. 
the word of God says it plain and simple. And Jill, you just keep doing this. If I be lifted up, you want, you want to know how he builds his, his sanctuary? You want to know how he builds his? If I be lifted up, you ain't got to worry about nothing else. Just keep lifting. If I be lifted up, I will draw. This is the spirit of God. He will do the drawing. All men, women, hearts unto himself. We, our responsibility is just to be the vessels that can be used to do the lifting. Not in your name, but in the name of who Christ is. How will you respond today, saints? How will you respond? What is God asking you to do? Again, my instruction to you, you must watch this again because God's not done with this, with this particular portion of this word yet. And so I'm going to pray right here. First and foremost, I pray that the Holy Spirit of conviction rides you until you watch this message again. I pray that it rides you and rides you hard until you watch this message again. And then write down the question that the Spirit is leading you to, to know. And it's in those questions that you will begin to ask of yourself in the spirit realm that you'll start to get all the answers you need. The answers are right there. How will you respond today? See, today, she talked about being in the present moment. Today, right now, this is the only present moment you have. So what are you going to do with that? So first and foremost, wherever you are, I'm just, I'm just going to pray this prayer unto you, Heavenly Father. Bow your heads, close your eyes. And here's as humbly as I can, God. Feeling your presence all around me through a screen knowing that only a Holy Spirit, your spirit can do such a thing. I pray that that same energy transfer into any and every voice person's house that heard Jill's voice and hear my voice right now. God, expose them to the questions and then expose them to the answers. First and foremost, God, somebody right now under the sound of my voice needs to repent. Means to let go what you've been doing Turn your back on it, walk away from it, and then throw the match on it and set it on fire so that you can never return to it again. There is a mindset right now, God, that I'm feeling in your presence that somebody needs to repent of. There is behaviors that somebody's operating in right now that does not represent you or what your call is on their life, God. Right now, God, I pray a prayer of repentance that somebody turns their back, walks away, throw the match behind you and set it on fire so that there is nothing to return to. And Father God, as that happens, I now pray, Father God, on behalf of the saints under the sound of my voice, I pray for an elevation in spiritual matters. I pray for an elevation in spiritual thinking. I pray for an elevation in spiritual knowledge, God. I pray for an elevation in spiritual movement, meaning they move according to your word and voice. I pray, Father God, that somebody just stop questioning you, God, and just start moving according to what you've already told them to do. And I pray right now, God. I pray right now, God, that you will open up the hearts of the ones that we have been planted to serve. Father God, I pray that you be lifted up. I pray that you draw all men, women, children, souls unto you. And Father God, whatever your purpose is, God, I pray that we all fall in line. It's not you, God, it's us. It's never been you, God, it's always been us. Help us to fall in line to what you know to be true. And help us to stop fighting against, going against the wrong side of the grave. Help us, God, to be what it is that you need us to be. Not for our sake, but for the sake of being a disciple of the Christ, whose mission is to draw men to fish for souls. Father God, we are not blind to the realities that surround us and that there is a lot of darkness going on. Help us to turn our lights up. 
And for those of us that have turned them off, help us to turn them back on. Father God, lead us that we may lead this next generation, this next season, the next moment in spirit and not according to who we think we are or have been. Father God, forgive us for our sins, forgive us for our foolishness, forgive us for our mindsets, forgive us for anything, Father God, that has separated us from you. And bring us back into that place, Father God, where we can start to generate love, generate hope, generate salvation. May egos die and everything that's not useful to the kingdom of heaven. For if you be lifted up, we know that you will draw all men unto you. God, I thank you for this message. I thank you for this day. May the saints on the side of my voice say amen and be obedient to the spirit of my voice. It is in Jesus name, also known as Yeshua, the Christ, and spoken in many other names and many other languages, depending on where you're from. Whatever we decide to call you, God, we know you are Savior and you are Lord. Help us to start acting like such. It is in your name we pray and we thank you. Let the true believers say amen, amen, amen.